Um, Martin Luther King. Abraham Lincoln. And Malcolm X. Um, hi, I'm from Lincoln, who else I think of? Do you want to see the right movement? Yeah. I think about, um, George Washington. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Malcolm X. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King. And Martin Luther King. <laughs> When thinking about the civil rights movement, the average citizen of the United States thinks of one thing, African American men, one effect, desegregation, and one name, Martin Luther King Jr. The civil rights movement was based around one thing, equality. But the question was, equality for whom? As African Americans boycotted and fought relentlessly for their rightly deserved equal rights, women were fighting a similar war. And within these two wars was an incredible amount of irony. As African American women were supporting African American men in their fight for racial equality, they were discriminated against. Women worked and fought for rights which were denied to them by both black men and white people. As African American women, they were unfairly endowed with the disadvantages of both being a female and being African American. The oppression from both African American men and white people that African American women faced led them to fight not only for racial equality but also for their equal rights as women, playing an integral role in both movements. They look at themselves as women, but uh, we've had to look at ourselves as black. The fight for racial equality was a long and difficult one, causing many deaths and riots. The KKK became stronger than ever. Fury and tension were evident everywhere. It is hard to believe that the African American men who fought so hard for their equality and believed so passionately in their message thought acceptable to oppress women. However, this statement is true. There's different things that I find going around the country dealing with black women is that many times black women are, like I just said, not even considered women by certain people who have power. Uh, so they're not looking to have you be in that panel with them. They're not looking to have a place for you. Per se. They want to, a lot of people think that feeling sorry for us is justice. You know, I have a lot of women that I argue with, with who I'm like, no. The sexism that was present in the civil rights movement was a continuation of the oppressive mentality that existed in the larger U.S. culture, which was and is a white male dominated culture. Professor Bernard Lee said, Martin Luther King was absolutely a male chauvinist. He believed that the wife should stay home and take care of the babies while he'd be out there in the streets. This sentiment, that a woman's primary role is a homemaker or caretaker, is not limited to the king, to other black leaders in the civil rights movement, or to the black community. Women had to fight for equality in every aspect of their lives. Women, specifically African American women, were treated unfairly. The hierarchy of society during the 50s and 60s went from white men, white women, black men, and last on the tier, African American women. African Americans themselves had little to no power, but to be an African American woman was a completely different battle. In 1963, for example, Betty Friedan, founder of the National Organization for Women, published The Feminine Mystique, which exposed the strict and confining gender roles in the U.S. society in the 1950s and the 1960s. The feminine mystique revealed how girls were expected to marry and then live vicariously through their husbands, without establishing their own identities or interests. The book identified the ways in which society justified the idea of male domination, mainly through reinforcement and assumptions about gender through media, schools, churches, and many other places. Betty Friedan at her most angry, you know, side view with her finger in the air, just angry look on her face, and this beautiful young woman on the other side, and the headline was, who would you choose? So that's how the media fed into criticizing the movement, making fun of the movement. In the heart of the fight for civil rights, Marches were being organized, speeches were being made, and everyone was beginning to take notice of this one thing, which was racial equality. But it's hard for us to understand, and the question still remains, how these men who believed so strongly in racial equality could also believe in oppressing the women who were just trying to help and support them.
The nation listened as its leading moral prophet spoke in rhythmical and memorable cadences about his dream. Several women were still fuming, including the usually demure Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, the women who set in motion a social revolution that would, in less than a decade, turn the country upside down, did not agree with what Dr. King was saying. She recognized that he, in fact, was oppressive to women as he forbade her to speak and did not mention the equality of sexes during his speech. Women who were advocates for the movement were all denied the right to speak and share their ideas. Some of these women include Ella Baker, Edith S. Sampson, and Diane Nash. Ella Baker was described as the greatest organizer the civil rights movement ever knew. She was denied by black men her right to publicly share her thoughts during the marches the and gatherings. Movement. She probably did more to uh, bring people on board the civil rights movement than anyone, including Dr. King. She was uh, an independent woman. Uh, she uh, became a worker for the NAACP uh, during the 30s and 40s. This oppression that women faced, both from the white people and the African American men, eventually led them to fight for two different civil rights movements. These African American women played an integral and influential role in the African American civil rights movement, even though they were not permitted to advocate their beliefs as the men were. If you ask an elementary school student who they think of when they think of the civil rights movement, you're bound to hear names like Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. And though these men truly deserve the credit that they receive, it is also true that much of the success of the civil rights movement had to do with the selfless acts of the African American women who fought for, for the a number of years. The Negro passengers on the city bus lines of Montgomery have been humiliated, intimidated, and faced threats. Long before Martin Luther King was enlisted to lead the Montgomery Improvement Association, which called for a boycott of the Montgomery bus system, Joan Robinson, the head of the Women's Political Council and its other members had been advocating for a boycott protesting the segregation of buses. Robinson, a professor at the historically black Alabama State College in Montgomery, became an activist after being verbally attacked by a white bus driver in 1949. After becoming president of the WPC, the organization focused on the abuses and degradation endured by black bus riders on a daily basis. Faced with the opportunity to organize around Rosa Parks' arrest, the WPC immediately went to action, calling for a bus boycott. And for the year that the boycott continued, the Women's Political Council did the difficult and sometimes dangerous work of organizing alternative means of transportation for Montgomery's black workers. Parks credited her mother and grandfather for giving her the spirit of freedom, that she should not feel because of her race or color inferior to any person, that she should do her very best to be a respectful person and to respect herself, to expect respect from others and to learn what she possibly could for self-improvement. Park's life reveals a life history of being rebellious, as she liked to explain it. Rosa Parks is one of the most well-known women activists in the civil rights movement, but there were many others that taught her, cheered for her, and stood beside her. When Rosa was 13, she was enrolled in Miss White's School for Young Black Girls, teaching young black girls to be proper Christian women and with tutoring them in academic subjects such as English, science, and geography. The school stressed the dignity of all people. These teachers outlined the freedom set in the Constitution and the responsibilities of all citizens. Parks learned that she was a person with dignity and self-respect, and she should not set her sights lower than any, anybody else just because she was black. She was taught to be ambitious and to believe that she could do anything what she wanted, reinforcing the message of pride she learned at home. These women educators played such an influential and crucial role in this movement. They were the ones who empowered others to go out and fight for their freedom. They were the ones who educated African Americans on their constitutional rights and educated them on the movement itself. Women such as Ella Baker played the most crucial roles in this movement. Ella was one of the first African American civil rights and human activists in the 1930s. She mentored young civil rights leaders such as Rosa Parks, Diane Ruash, and Mo Bob Moses, and many more. Ella not only educated African-American women, but also African-American men, such as Martin Luther King and Thugard Marshall. Septina Poens Clark, called the Queen of the Civil Rights, was also an influential educator during this time. This eventually led her to work alongside with Martin Luther King and other African-American activists. 
It is vital that the whole story of the civil rights movement be told in a way that includes everyone who contributed. Only this way can we truly understand how we achieved the progress we have witnessed over the past 60 years. These African American women influenced leaders such as Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, W.E. Du Bois, and many others. The determination and selfless acts of these women is what made the presence of the movement so influential. The fight for racial equality directly correlated with the fight for feminism. You know, they say a woman's place is in the home, and uh, I suppose as long as she's in the home, she might as well be in the kitchen. Oh. African American women continued to fight for equality as they began participating in the feminist movement. The feminist movement, much like the many other movements for equality in this time, was a result of the success that was found in the racial equality movement. After being faced with gender oppression in the racial movement that they were supporting, African American women found the root of the problem and began fighting for their rights as women. It was believed by even the black men fighting for racial equality that men and women are unequal by nature. The two do not submit to one another, rather the woman submits to her black man. These women had it the hardest. When they went to fight for their racial equality, they faced sexism, and when they turned to fight for gender equality, they faced racism. Thus, black feminism was created. In 1973, the National Black Feminist Organization was formed in New York, and the Combahee River Collective, another black feminist organization, was founded in Boston in 1974. African American women brought about new ways to see both racial and gender inequality through their fight to find a way to end all oppression of their kind. To do this, they set their goals high, achieved them, and changed the country forever. Not even, we're not even there yet on things like man-woman treatment. We're on just being considered a woman in many women's cases. When the African American women turned to the feminist movement to fight for their equality, they were excluded. It was hard to believe that they were suffering from another form of oppression in another group, but the white feminists believed that those who were oppressed could not oppress, and refused to see what they were doing to the black women through their suffering. The black feminists and the National Black Feminist Organization identified themselves with the word womanist. Because I deeply espouse so much of both, but I'm a womanist. I am not able to completely embrace black nationalism because it is so masculine, uh, so male identified. The leaders of them, many of them, if you name one, I know him personally. My thing is that we have a, we are half of God. If there is a God, then men are one half and we're the other half. This word represents who the black feminists were as a group of women. They strongly believed that they had not yet been liberated and they made it their mission to gain their liberation. It focused on self-determination and the appreciation for all aspects of womanhood. Their definition was both affirming and challenging for it condemns a woman's stretching of her personal boundaries. However, the NBFO was ended in 1974. The Combahee River Collective, the largest black feminist organization, interpreted feminism in a more political and specific way. They identified with the fact that they were actively committed to struggling against racial, sexual, heterosexual, and class oppression. They saw it as their goal and their task to reveal how these major systems of oppression were all interlocking and find a way to liberate themselves from every one of them. According to Barbara Smith, the specific issues first worked on were reproductive rights, sterilization abuse, equal access to abortion, health care, child care, the rights of the disabled, violence against women, rape, battering, and many more. The organization worked vigorously through the 1970s and 1980s to achieve their goals pertaining to the problems that they pinpointed. The Combahee River Collective quickly became the most important group of black feminists as it improved life for African American women across the country. Both black feminist organizations mentioned here and the many more created around the globe paved the way to black women becoming liberated. Liberation for the African American woman seemed like an impossible thing because they were at the lowest disadvantage. But these organizations, made specifically for this purpose, helped black feminists gain everything that they deserved. African American women were led to fight for both their racial equality as well as their equal rights as women with where they played integral roles in both movements. 
because of the harsh oppression that they face, both from white people as well as from African American men. As we reflect on the contributions that these women made to the civil rights movement, it's important to remember that these women had to rise above double oppression, oppression for being African American as well as oppression for being a woman. These African American women rose above the oppression that they faced in the civil rights movement and still made positive contributions to the civil rights movement. Their contributions were not limited to only music, art, and literature, but these women served as true heroines to American society.